I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing that, uh, that's from D, those napkins are from degreasing pizzas? Yeah. This is my trash, actually. It's not, it's any trash. Yeah, and we're getting into the car again. Um, is that, is there anything over here that you think is particularly interesting? Hmm. Besides just my globe and keeping older boxes, so I know where what I've got. This is otherwise it. That's over here, and there's pennies that I've got like crazy, except I can't get to them without throwing a lot of things around. But this, this is my globe. I like this globe. This globe's got a lot of details. You can also see the various where kind of like hills and stuff no. are at, mountains. They're all nicely marked, and you can actually see the raised effect. Of course, if you get a side shot, you can actually see that really easy. That's pretty much all there is for the globe. Do you get a shot of him just holding it without talking? Okay. So that way he talks about geography or anything. So I see you have a lot of old uh, Gatorade cartons. Is it because you used to drink a lot of Gatorade? or? Yeah, I used to drink a lot of Gatorade and Powerade, but uh, that was, I, I think, that started in June of 2002 due to a Shakespeare play. I have no idea what the name of the play is, but they're, that just had a very minor role. No speech was needed to be learned or anything like that. Just short actions that last five seconds or something. There was one line that I recall very well that's with a hello within and somebody that was being hollered. I came, rushed out, grabbed something, and I went back to where the tent is. Rushed out about like seven mile an hour or something. Just a slight jog in a way. But that was the first time I got involved with Gatorade and Powerade. And for years I've actually had it, but it's too high in sugar, so I kind of had to stop it. Why did you, um, you, so you switched because it had too much sugar in it? Yeah, 70, uh, there's 70 calories in each, uh, 8 ounce serving, which is, the 8 ounce serving is pretty much a standard because that's one cup. Uh, let's see. Mm, and the burp. And the eight ounce. Uh, yeah, um, let's see. It's 70 divide 8. Or, yeah, it's 4 grams. 4 calories from each gram of carbohydrates. So it's 70 divide 4, which is 13 and a half. Yeah, okay. So there's 13 and a half grams of sugar in each one of those Powerade and Gatorade servings times that by four for each bottle and if I remember let's see I think I went through two or three of those in one day so yeah that's just a whole lot of sugar I had no choice but to stop and that's why I went to the my the canned light drinks first it was Tropicana but the annoying pit uh how was that company name Pepsi Cola Pepsi that's what it was but the Pepsi company has really been getting annoying with me lately because they don't offer a particular product that I'd really love to have. I would buy like 24 of those 12 can packs, if not still more. Tropicana Sugar-Free Lemonade. That disappeared one February day in I think 2007. And since then I can only ever get them in Minneapolis. And this is really getting on my nerves and it's so annoying. I wish I could get that product in a way that, well, there's no online grocery stores that ship out to here. There's, and if there is one, the it's like 10 bucks for the actual item before any shipping, which really amplifies things. And, well, you get the idea. And then the, the Coca-Cola company started to be causing me problems toward uh, February of 2011 or yeah, it was in March, actually, of 2011. And uh, they discontinued two products. Uh, that raspberry limey, or 
raspberry passion and cherry limeade of the, of their fruit drinks that they had minute made you know uh, they discontinued that so now I'm stuck with their rather bad tasting lemonade did you drink the Gatorades as quickly as you drank the the, the lemonades you know there were 32 ounce bottles so there's no way I could have done it but yeah I still drink them pretty quickly okay um, anything else in here? Your old notebooks? What's in there, all the old notebooks? Just notes. This is all stuff from sister when she was in here, way back before April 2004 is when I moved into here. So where did you sleep before then? That craft room that mom doesn't want you guys into. <laughs> is, is, she, is that where she, does she do like... It's basically her bedroom in a sense, but she doesn't sleep there. She watches TV and posts up toxic waste sticks called cigarettes. Or cancer sticks, fire sticks, poison sticks. I got all kinds of names for them things. Cast a delete spell on every single one of them that's ever made. That'd really help. Of course, I'd hog up a lot of SP casting all that. So, uh, that's your, is that the fuse box for the whole house right there? Yes, that is the fuse box, or the, uh, what is that thing called? It's circuit breaker, that's what it is. That's actually the circuit breaker. And any time a circuit trips, I go warn Dad about it. Does that happen a lot? Very rarely, but sometimes it does happen. And some, and there was well, probably one case or two where it repeatedly tripped, and Dad had to investigate what the problem was. Turns out water was getting in the uh, electric plug-in thing, so that did cause some problems. This is from snow, trying to charge a battery, and it kept tripping all the time, so he had to make some changes and, and stop tripping from there. This, this is your laundry, and... Well, these are my clean clothes, but the ones above are actually too big for me because they've shrunk in size from all the degreasing I do. Uh, so, I use those for last resort emergencies. So if I run out of underwear or something, then yes, I do use those then. So you've actually lost weight from degreasing pizza? Oh, yes. And getting, abandoning Powerade slash Gatorade and all those sodas. I stopped meat. It was all in an effort to go from my 240 pounds that I once was down to probably the 140 I am now. So you lost 100 pounds? Yeah. Wow. And that was in three years, I think. It took you three years to lose 100 pounds? Three, four years, I don't exactly know, but... When did you start When did you start losing weight? That was January 2004. So you've been how you are now since 2007, then? If it took three years? They, I've been pretty much around this weight uh, since around 2007, 2008, give or take. There is some uncertainty on that. 65% certain, I believe, for 2007. And this is, uh, what's your shampoo and conditioner? What about these headphones? Does this work? Those are not... Oh, those are headphones. Yeah, these are not headphones. I'm very sensitive to loud sounds. Anything that starts getting above 60 decibels, I start getting uncomfortable with. So, that's what these are for. There are no speakers inside these. What kind of things do you use this for? Well, there are times during construction stuff where my dad needs help guiding big sheets of plywood. You know, they're like eight feet long and four feet wide, you know, if you're familiar with construction. Uh, yeah, and he's got this one bandsaw, I think it is. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know what it's called. But uh, he uh, needs often needs help going at getting that cut to the right sizes and such. Trouble is, that's like, 85, 90 decibels, which is way too loud for me. My only protection is those things, which does help a lot. Knocks the volume down about 30 decibels, which does kind of put in my comfort zone. It's actually 55 as I perceive it. And those decibel values are just estimates based on what I'm familiar with. Okay. Uh, do you want to talk about uh, your 
video game systems? Mm, that's how we were going. Oh, okay, okay, we'll do that. Yeah. Um, so, how about uh, your key, your keyboard and mouse uh, and the drive sheets? You wanna talk about how you don't like the feel of? Do you think it's the? Do you know exactly? My greasy, why? my oily hands are the problem. They're off. They're very oily, and I don't exactly know why. But uh, over time, the oily effect makes it very uncomfortable to hold control, video game controllers. My, punching keys on the keyboard and holding the mouse for stuff like that so I put dryer sh literally put dryer sheets over them used ones but not very old ones either of course after some time they do get replaced with newer ones so and there are limits as to they, when I do find them from whenever I wash my do my laundry or someone else's laundry and they're already running through the dryer and stuff if it's in pretty good condition, then yes, I do use it. This one here, for example, is in pretty good condition. It's pretty straight and level. It doesn't have any browning or anything like that. So yeah, if I ever need it, this one will end up being used. Can't smell anything, but then again, my sense of smell is only 5% as powerful as anyone else's. Uh, this one's also a pretty good one. Although it's kind of wrinkly on the bottom, so this this one won't be used for the keyboard. It's better designed for the mouse. And this one, yeah, it's got a huge kink like this here, so this one might unfortunately be end up being thrown in the trash, but it might be used for the mouse. That's to be decided at the moment. So how long have you been using these ones? Uh, they usually last up to about a month, sometimes a month and a half, sometimes only just two weeks. It all depends on what goes on. Do you have shots of these already? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can. Uh, I'll get some more when we're doing the computer stuff and yeah, typing yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, okay. So, do you want to move on to the some more Altoids there? I see. Yeah, those, that's got pennies inside there. I think it's like 100 or even 150 in there. That's just to put weight on it so that those dryer sheets do not move. Because if they move, it starts causing problems. So that's what that's basically for. And they're screwed in on the bottom there? Yes, that is. Those are three screws there to hold it in. Um... Okay, do you want to talk about your computer now and like specs and stuff like that? Uh, I'd have to almost bring on my computer to find out what the specs are oh. for exact detail, but. Okay, we can do that when you have your computer on then. Um, what else? Your external hard drive. Do you see anything else uh, of interest on here? <laughs> Over here. And then there's, there's the printer there and old. Some DVD-Rs that I use to burn backup on. Do you keep backups of everything? Oh yes, yeah, so I've got backups lying somewhere around here that date back to 2003, or even 2002. But uh, you still you still collect marbles? No, that's actually for a game that I call Marbles Lights Out. It requires a light bright. This thing right here. If you're a, if you've got children or something, you might remember this. Yeah, I mean, this is All out. So what would you do with the marbles? They're actually part of a game that I've made quite a, quite a long time ago, where basically you'd put a marble up here, let it drop and see if you get the lights and stuff out. And of course it jams up, if it jams up all the way to the top or something and there's no place to move, kind of like Tetris and the such, then, well, the, you lose basically. And of course anything that falls down here, you can actually reuse. I, I'd have to look it up on my computer because it's been so long since I last played it. But yeah, it is a fun game to play and it's kind of addicting in a way too. It's just an extra twist on your childhood picture making with all those little lights bulbs that come with a machine. Okay. Uh, so these are all your. Oh, I, I know what you can do. Um, do 
you want to show, remember when you were talking about you can read the text at the bottom of checks? Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, that would be related to vision and my senses instead of the stuff around my room, so. I would think we should probably finish off the tour of my room. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah, so. That way everything's grouped up. The last thing I would say then is, uh, did you want to show off your rock collection? Oh yeah, let me, let me get that box out of there. Free hit. Rocks are one of my favorite things uh, that I often collect. Whenever I go around, uh, I'm often looking on the ground look for any rocks that look interesting to me like this uh, I think this is quartz or something yeah quartz there this one I found when I was in Triangle YMCA camp if you look real closely you can see there it's got nice bands and lines it's a very very nice rock and from the side like this it's also pretty easy to see here's another angle really nice to see that too it's very easy to see the banding on this so yeah, this rock easily grabbed my attention. And of all rocks that are my top favorite, happens to be this, granite. I just love granite. It's my top favorite rock of them all. Would, you, just, like, would you like so much about it? I like the glittering effect from the mica and the, uh, I also like the uh, black feldspar. I like pretty much everything about it. And I think the red is corundum. I don't remember the exact names, but this was back in uh, seventh grade that I got this. This is a really, really nice flat rock. Ooh, this is so nice. So flat. If you were to probably zoom in so much on this and actually look at it really, really super close, you're there's probably only like a height difference measuring, I don't know, maybe mil not even a millimeter. That's just how fine this is. Probably, it might be in the micrometer range, but... I wouldn't know. I'd have to get a microscope for that. My evil teacher uh, gave me uh, some sandstone. At least that was the only good thing she did. And yeah, this is a really nice piece of sandstone that I was given for that. If you be very careful with this and actually kind of grind it on a little bit, you can actually get a little little bits of sand falling out. So I need to be careful with these. Here's another form of sandstone. Uh, let's see. This rock glitters a lot, probably because there's a lot of mina, mica on it. Uh, let's see. This rock is also very flat, probably an extension of this one that I showed earlier. I'm not quite sure what the mineral is that makes this up. But it's pretty nice rock. How long have you been collecting them? Uh, I've had these, these, some of these date back to like 2000. Uh, the YMCA camp one, this one is from like 1997. Really? Yeah. I think this one is also from YMCA camp. Because if you look at it, it's almost a perfect rectangle. This is almost a perfect rectangle. It's just a few odd areas here and there. It's kind of rounded too, but weathering and erosion do have their effects. Uh, let's see. Ah, here it is. This is a volcanic rock. Uh, scoria, I think it is. There's two of them. One's very light and one's kind of a dark color. I don't remember which is which, but yeah. They got two different forms of. I think this is scoria. Let's see, what else is there? Ooh, this one glitters. Left throw, left throw, left throw. <laughs> this one really shines. Now this one is so nice. I like how this one glitters. 
Dude, this is so pretty. Isn't it nice? Yep, I'm always out looking for treasures and stuff. You never know what you'll find when you're walking around. Yeah, there was one other. Ah, here it is. Dig down. Lift throw. Lift throw. Okay. This is a polished rock. Uh, I think there's a rock museum in the partial area. It's to the south of where I'm at. But uh, this is where I got this one from, if I remember. And you can actually see through it. Can you see my face through this? And for the best prize of them all, are you ready? This is my masterpiece. Oh, this is so pretty. It is amazing. So how did I get this? Well, it's no treasure, I'll tell you that. This one I actually had to pay for. At the uh, Renaissance Festival that I went to in 2010, September I believe it was, uh, this is when I actually got this. I just happened to have found a place that sold rocks. Kind of a strange thing in a way when you think about it. And I just happened to have seen this. I knew I wanted it, so I got it. But this is my masterpiece. And I'm keeping it separate from my main rock box. Because this, this is special. And then some. And a nice color. Oh yes, that is a very pretty color. And I want the location kept secret too. Or hidden, you know. Well, where the, you keep the rock? Yeah, I don't want it on film. Oh, okay. Well, that's otherwise it for the rocks. You didn't, catch, you didn't catch where he pulled it from right there. It was blocked by his head. Okay. Alright. Um, unless there's anything like inside any of these drawers you want to show. Or your consoles up there. Well, let's, let me just look first. Another motherboard. Discs again. Don't know what that is. So, oh, there is a fan on there. Huh, interesting. Old camera, nothing really special. This is where all my games and some of my other game controllers and stuff are. Yeah, when was the last time you ever seen something like this? I own that game. You do? Yeah. I can't play it because I don't have the system. Yeah, I've played it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. I have that one too. I have a big Atari collection. I have no Atari games. I don't, I, well I have, I have Atari games as you can obviously tell. It's just that uh, I don't have any system to play them with. These are dug out of the basement when we were mass cleaning thanks to flooding from excessive rain and heavy ground saturation. These are all games I want to sell, get rid of them. I don't like them. Uh, this one's too violent. I do not like this at all. Those are against my nature. Fighting games, X on those. I do not care for those. This game is frustratingly difficult. I gave up on it. These two, I've never been able to figure out what you're even supposed to do in these. Uh, let's see. I got a, I already got pretty much this, but Duck Hunt, I don't have the tools for that, so might as well sell the duplicate, right? This and I otherwise don't remember much. But if I remember, I could never figure out what you're even supposed to do with it. Or what you're supposed to do in the game. This, I've never been able to figure out either. But it seems too violent anyway. So, yep, that's going on, gone on the cell bin. Now this is violent like crazy. You shoot everything with guns. Those kinds of games are against my nature. Yep, no wonder why it's in the cell bin. 
Uh, let's see. I already got this game. <laughs> uh, so, basically, gonna sell a duplicate. Uh, pretty obvious there. What is this one? I already have this game, too. So, another duplicate. Why bother keeping duplicates? Sell. All out. This game is kind of dull and boring. These are just not my kinds of games, so might as well sell. Is that a puzzle game? Yeah, it's kind of a puzzle type game. Uh, well, a cross between puzzle and arcade. It's kind of like Tetris and I, but not really. Mm-mm, various controllers. Get down there. Junk. Oh, here's an old tape recorder. That I didn't know I had. An old cassette. And in here, treasures and various other things. 2000, uh, the 2004 State Fair, or 2005, I don't remember exactly which, I found these balls laying on the ground far from anything that resembled the place that they would go to, so I just collected them and added them to my collection of treasures I find. You never know what you'll find when you're always on the lookout. Because, hey, yeah, I've actually found a few quarters, really old ones. found a 1919 penny or something, if I remember. And it's all just junk. What is in here? Is oh, old controllers. Nope. Controllers too. Who knows what? Ooh. Guess that's otherwise it besides the game controls. Do you want to talk about the consoles? Well, uh, if you probably look at my, uh, Ziva. <laughs> If you look at my console systems here, you can tell that I've got quite a few systems. But one thing seems strangely missing, and that's the current generation systems. After all, when you think about it this way, you're paying like $250 for the system itself, and then you got various games that cost like 40 or so bucks each. That's 330 bucks for that combined total, essentially $165 for one game. That is outrageous. That's why I don't have any of the current generation systems and it may be years before I even get them. And by the time I do get them, they're already previous generation. So basically, the PlayStation 3. Whenever I do get that, the PlayStation 4 would probably have been out for about a year or so. Another five or six years later, I'll probably get the PlayStation 4 when the PlayStation 5 has been out for another year. It's pretty much like that. Today's games have so few games, there's so few games of interest nowadays very few so you'll notice a sudden decline in the number of games I have from uh, newer systems uh, from older systems to newer systems you'll see a, quite a sudden decline in the number of games I got it's because there's just too few of interest games tend to be more violent now yeah that's part of it for one and then of course all the favorites have disappeared like Mario I haven't seen Mario in so many years now because it's always on stupid handhelds I hate handhelds there's Mario on the Wii but you don't like motion controls right no that's X that off because just because of that why don't you like motion controls I don't like it seriously I just don't like having to move so much just for that I think it's dumb But, yep, this is uh, the second or third game that I actually got so heavily involved with. Uh, if I remember, I had uh, in one game that I had long ago on, my, on a Tandy 1000 computer or something, I don't remember exactly, back in the days when 20 megabyte hard drives were actually pretty standard. I'd be lucky enough to get one. Uh, but either way... Uh, this game here is pro the third. Uh, let's try to think here. I, uh, if I remember, I got so powerful in this game that uh, even with the training 
sword. Uh, those squid-like enemies in the uh, final area, uh, I could actually almost defeat them in one hit. I was getting pretty close to that. I was defeating them in two hits. Enemies with 64 HP, I was taking those out in one hit. That gun thing that shoots off those blobs or whatever, those uh, I could actually fill in one hit. The scorpions, those I can take in one hit. Those have 48 HP if I remember. The training sword normally does one it's if when you're starting the game out, just for reference. What about uh, these cabinets? Anything of interest in those? I'd have to look through them. Lift. Throw. Lift. Throw. Old VCR, a metal detector that I've pretty much never really used. I was going to use it to go hunt for treasures out in like a woods nearby, but I just don't seem to have the motive, so lost interest in there. And this is my previous computer before this one over here. Uh, except the motherboard or processor died, I'm not sure which, but I couldn't get it. To, I could get it to start up, and there was power. Nothing was showing up on the monitor, there was no beeps from the uh, post power on self test in case you don't know what that is but this is my primary games door where you can see all the various games in here this is not a game uh, let's see what is this huh. 40 pin EIDE cable very slow these of course, this is uh, something from Final Fantasy XII. This is the game that holds the record of that one song with 132,500 plays. I got this off eBay and probably just get rid of that. This game's got really good music. Yeah, let's see. This is just a weird game, and when I mean weird, I mean weird. Yep, it's weird. There is this one itchy and scratchy level, I don't remember exactly which, but I, but I went on this game for so long I had like a million points before I even had the very first page. That's how crazy I sometimes get. I just wanted to see what would happen. Sonic 2 is kind of a dull game. There really isn't much to it. The scrolling speed is too slow, though. That's the only problem with it. 16 pixels per frame is just too slow. I get that with no effort. Arrow the Acrobat isn't too bad, although it's... Eh. Not... Some of the music on there is actually pretty good. But still, it's rarely played. Because there just isn't much replay value to it. There isn't much to do. No fun stuff that I can make use of. Like debug mode in Sonic 2. Or the Sonic game. Get this stupid thing out of the way. This game I almost never play. Because, well, you can only play as Sonic. And you can't glug out Tails with debug or anything like that. This game is rather difficult and... Just to change options, you gotta wait for so long for an annoying effects at the start of the game. This game I love. And I think it's by level 2 or something, you can get so many extra balls, you can pretty much just go through the whole game from there. It's such an easy thing to do. There's this one gate guard type thing. This game's got good music, and one of the songs on it has gone on for 46 days, I think. No, that was Final Fantasy. 27 days. It's a song I call Winterland. Uh, it's uh, round 5 1. Uh, okay, let's cover some NES games. We'll just start going that way. Super Mario 3. Oh, how I remember this one so much. I've actually literally gotten a max score on the very first level in the game, if I remember. Then I had 24 consecutive cases of that one, uh, 124 consecutive cases of that one matching game, and I pretty much nailed that one out so much I 
cleared out the whole thing in 70 times in that 124 or so. I pretty much really mastered that. But I love the way that game is designed. It's like a masterpiece of all. Blaster Master is hard. It's one of the hardest games I've ever completed. The music is kind of iffy, but it's not bad. I remember playing this with uh, old friends that I remember, that I associate Final Fantasy VI with. This game, when I first got it, which is probably one of my very first RPGs that I ever played, I could never figure out what you are even supposed to do. I got to level 5, but I never knew that you could actually fight those ships and actually to claim the ships and pretty much go from there. That's the only thing that ever stopped me from making further progress, because I had no idea what you're supposed to do. Now, pretty much every gamer should probably know what this is. Tetris. Oh yes, you remember this? It's a puzzle game, but I very rarely ever play it. Hmm, when do I have this one? I guess this one belongs in a cell bin, because this is not my kind of game. It's kind of an arcade classic or something. So, discard that. You remember Metroid? This one I have about 1,500 hours on. Seriously, 1,500 hours. This is my uh, second most played game of all. Marble Madness. It's just a marble racing game. Rather short, though, but... Hey, it's got 3D and stuff like that. It's not too bad, though, but still, it is quite a challenging game, especially in, by the time you... Because few can even get to the sixth level, but I can quite consistently make it. i got to thank Super Monkey Ball for that. Bart vs. the World. This one I remember from a long time ago. It's various random things. I remember once having almost 50 lives on this one. Now, how short of a game do you think this is? This is the shortest game that I've ever seen from start to finish. How short? Well, YouTube once had a 10 minute time limit. I could play through this game twice in that short of time period. That's how ridiculously short this thing is. And yes, by the way, I've defeated Jaws and Power 1. Kinda of tough to do, but it's possible. I've done it. Takes an awful lot of hits, too. This is probably the easiest of all the platforming games that I've ever played. Uh, I remember visiting someone's house and watching someone playing this. Uh, I was told that it was a girl's game, which kind of didn't make much sense. But when I played this game, I found it so easy, it was just amazing. how, Because I've actually gone through this whole game without even losing a life and rarely ever taking hits. That's just how easy it is. This game... I actually don't even remember it at all. Probably just put it in a cell bin or something, because I think this is a war kind of game or something, but I don't know. I'm just going to put this in the question mark bin. This one, I have not a clue as to even what it is. Given the icon in the front of the game, I think there's probably some kind of shooter, which means it goes in the cell bin. I first played this on DOS, back when computers were DOS, and there was Windows was pretty much a complete unknown. But, yep, I remember this game. This is just more limiting than the DOS version. But, chances are, if I'm to ever win on this, I need like 100 plays or so before I even get close to winning, let alone a stalemate, which is actually the closest I've ever gotten to winning, without having to take back like 200 times just to win. This game is hard like crazy. I've never been able to beat it, but it is quite an enjoyable game. At least you can power level on this some, which does help. Uh, let's see. This game is the one that I've got so much time on, it's just going to blow your mind away. I wonder how many hours I've got on this? Ever wonder how many hours I got on this? 3,600. That is a lot of play. And it's all because of two main things. Glide hops and speed like you would never believe. 
you can just go so fast on this game it just blows your mind away everything streaks by so fast it's amazing this game I was recently playing not too long ago but I find it so limiting that I might as well just sell it because I don't like it too much simply because it's well limiting Move that. this is a unique game that I've got how often do you find games where you can actually make your own levels and stuff? Oh yes, and yeah, and it says pinball on here, so you probably figure out what it is. It's pinball, and you can make your own pinball tables. Pretty amazing that. And I've actually created two masterpieces. One I called Goldmine, and I don't remember the name of the other one. Of course, that's a clone. Ever since the release of this game and onward, Sonic has gone downhill real bad. I have ever pretty much lost all interest in Sonic after all from this game onward. They're they're just dull, boring, uninteresting. All the good stuff is taken out. Debug mode especially. Oh how I love that. Taz Escape from Mars. This one's kind of hard simply because the controls are rather awkward, but. At least, um, uh, Haunted Castle's first area's got the game's best music. I would love to get that song. This game I got for Christmas way back in, uh, like 1995 or something. But, uh, I never received it clear until, like, 2009 or 2010. It's simply because it was put in a box and my parents couldn't even find it for years. It was only until I actually found it. This game is one that I remember very recall very well for my two certain friends that I associate this game with. It's actually Final Fantasy VI, but it's labeled three because there's a naming mismatch or something like that. But um, Leet River, and there's this escape down the Leet River that I remember those two friends struggling with, with the boss, uh, I don't remember the name, Ultros I think it was. They struggled so much with it because Bannon kept falling and, and the such. Then I asked them if I could give it a try. They just kept refusing it. it didn't. And when I played this game, I found it to be so easy. There was like no challenge to it. So I literally played the whole game with only the initial magic characters being able to use magic. A character like Cyan could never use it. This game I've got an extreme case of power leveling on. You might notice power leveling is so common. But uh, Mount Ordeals, level 70 for Cecil as in a Paladin form, and I've never left the mountain. That's how extreme I get with power leveling. And that's just for starters. I'm going for 99. Mystic Quest. Uh, this game I otherwise vaguely recall. However, one thing I do remember on it uh, is... Uh, and that first forest, I don't remember the name of it or anything. Uh, but uh, one thing I'm trying to do is get to level the maximum. I think it's 41 or 50. I don't remember exactly. But uh, this is the game in which... It's a little on the more challenging side compared to the other two Final Fantasy games. But still, it's not bad. Super Metroid. I remember renting this game, but I could never figure out what you're even supposed to do. I, I was, if I remember, I was actually very skilled with what's called bomb jumping. You lay a bomb, you lay another bomb, and you get propelled up again. If you time the bomb laying just right, you can propel yourself to infinite heights. That I would love to see in an actual 3D game of Metroid, of which I've never experienced. Super Mario World. I've actually completed this game in 12 levels. And this one, I've actually also maxed the score from 0 to nearly 10 million in 8 minutes. And I can probably drop it down maybe to 7 minutes at the fast end. There's actually a glitch that you have left to exploit to do that, though. Over here are my GameCube games. Sonic Mega Collection is basically all the Genesis games and stuff all packed into one. I hated the fact that you had to play the game, start and stop the game so many times just to actually even get access to some of the ones that I really wanted. Sonic 3 and Knuckles being the primary.
Looney Tunes back in action. This one's kind of funny in a way, too, but what would you expect with Looney Tunes? But uh, this game, I'm trying to get to find out what happens when you get to 999999 for the money. That's something I've yet to get to. This game holds a record like you would not believe. Okay, you might be think Bubsy. It's got 3,600 hours. Well, this game has logged uh, 625 hours in only three months. That's the fastest rate of ever accumulating playtime on a game. No other game, not even Bubsy, comes close to that. And then, to make things even more extreme, 850 hours in five and a third months. No other game has come close. This one is basically my dream game. It's, aside from a few bugs and a few annoyances here and there, it's basically my dream game. There is no better game that I've ever seen. It almost even out, it outdoes Bubsy. Super Monkey Ball. Oh, I just love speed in this one. Yeah, except this one's not the best one for when it comes to speed. Still, there is uh, Expert Floor 50, if I remember, where I could actually get about almost a 400 mile an hour without the use of action replay. This game I don't like simply because of one thing. The camera is horrible. That's basically it. You can't drown tails, and I don't like those bulky machine things either. That's kind of dull. Yep, Sonic's gone downhill ever since Sonic 3D Blast, and this is one of those. Sonic Heroes, I vaguely recall, but I got to one of the bosses, and I had literally maxed the clock out trying to figure out what you were supposed to do. Ran out of rings, and I ended up dying because of that. But that was basically the furthest I ever got in this one. Shrek the Third is a PlayStation 2 game, but that belongs in the cell bin. Because, well... I really don't like it too much. Not my kind of style of game. This game, because I was so addicted to the first one, I decided to get. It was really difficult getting started, but ever since I worked around a lot of the nuisances and stuff, it's gotten a lot better. But still, the fact you have to advance the story in order to gain access to certain things, like more a faster experience rate gaining and other things like that, it's... That's the big downside in this game. I've, that's the worst part of it. Sonic Adventure DX. This is the closest of uh, the modern Sonic games that, I, that comes to being any good. And you can, in a way, draw on tails, and that's the fun thing about it. No debug, not as anywhere as fun. Mega Man Anniversary Collection. Uh, if I remember, I played uh, Mega Man 3 and Mega Man 4 on the regular NES game. Uh, except, uh, I've actually never been able to figure out what you're even supposed to do in any of these Mega Man games. I've never been able to beat them on the NES version, because, well, several things, actually. Because this game was very, very difficult. But when I got this, because I was thinking of Cossack from uh, Mega Man 4, that's basically what got me into that when I was playing Mega Man Legends. Super Monkey Ball 2. This game I hold a lot of records on. Getting tossed up at 4,500 mile an hour. There's another case of 1,350 mile an hour in Inchworms. The 4,500 is only possible in bead screen. To experience the full speed though, you'll have to use action replay to stop the clock, but it can be done even without stopping the clock. You'll actually run out of time still going up at over 999 mile an hour. But there's a lot of other stages where it gets so high. This is my top favorite of all the Super Monkey Ball games. I've got 800 hours on this one. Roughly, anyway. Lift throw. Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. This one's not anywhere near as good as the Looney Tunes back in action. It's because it requires that you get so much collection in there before you can actually get any more places unlocked and such, which is kind of a bad design in a way, but still it's not too bad in a way. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Adventure. This one, from this point onward, it seems like Super Monkey Ball has gotten worse. 
the speedometer, it's now graphical instead of an actual digit. It stops at 70 mile an hour, and if that 999 is any hint, oh yes, I can get so much faster than this. There's actually one stage in here where I estimate I get 500 mile an hour, based on the mechanics in the previous Super Monkey Ball games. Frogger. The only way I've ever been able to complete this one is to use the infinite live tricks. There are some levels that are so frustratingly difficult that by the time I complete them, I've, I'd have lost like a hundred lives. That's how hard this game is. But at least it does have some pretty good music. The original Spyro the Dragon. This game is, well, it's not bad, but I like the second one far better. Still, I've played this one quite a bit. It's not a bad game. Empty case, don't count. Action Replay. Hmm, now what is this? Well, this is not a game, I'll tell you that. But it's for the GameCube. Huh? Something about that don't make sense. Well, what it is, is you actually, it's a program, or special program, that allows you to change memory address, which, which in a way allows you to have infinite lives, and infinite health, and other things like that, or moon jump, like I do in Super Monkey Ball 2 a lot, which really adds so much to the replay value. Oh yeah, and debug mode in Super Monkey Ball 2, that was so much fun. Uh, there is one thing that I really wished I could be able to do that I have, that I've been able to haven't been able to figure out for five years now I think it's been and that's how do I find memory addresses so I can actually make my own codes in a way like you could with shark link that I remember once but could never get it to work because the system was glitched and that's it for here oh, oh, oh. What's in here? Junk. Delete that. Nothing in there. And left throw. Throw. And keep moving things. Lift this card. This is where I do that. Stay. This is where I store my paper towels whenever I otherwise need them, and I go through them a lot. And boy, do I go through them a lot. It's thanks to something called, what I call, degreasing. This one here, the select size, is what I use most. I, either Bounty or, what was that other one? Brawny. Those are the two that I use, prefer, or at least, they do really good at it. Although, some of the cheaper ones just stick to the cheese and other like that and such so they really don't become of much use but when I had the bigger pizzas then I use these that are not the selective size that's where those are optimized I base all the sizes and the such based on the uh, maximum efficiency so I don't go through them as much I guess it's about it for the tour mm, that's Good descriptions, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, there's more games up here that I could cover. But some of the... Oh, I got another Super Mario 3? Oh. I don't know. It's all in the city. Uh, Nick, what's this, what's this little drawing on the ceiling from? That's my sister. Did you draw that? No, that was my sister did it. Oh, she drew that. Yeah, my sister's into art. You don't like art? Me. Mm -hmm. I'm not skilled at it. I got like 90% aptitude. <laughs> math is my specialty, but it's so I combine my math and art together. That's how come platform math is as good as it is. It all comes down to numbers. Pixels times scaling equals coordinate units. You gotta love that formula. Is that one of your favorites? Yeah, that's my top favorite actually. E equals MC squared is my next. And fog formula. Yeah, I forgot about that one. It makes. That one's actually my second favorite, Z equals in, or the fog formula. That one's a pretty lengthy one. It's nothing more than basic color averaging. Okay. Um, Poster, I'm 
more games up here that could be covered. <clears throat> Watch out, Jared. Yeah, hey. Sorry. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, let's see which one of these Flash 2, I don't have the original Jumping Flash 1. <coughs> Empty case, but I can still cover it as is. Lots and lots of discs. What's in this one? Nothing. Got a lot of blank ones. Come on, thank you. Probably old backup disc from 2003. Here's the backup disc from 2008. Not a clue as to what that is. Zone alarm that I've abandoned. No idea what that is. Probably another backup disc. 2008 backup. Other discs for backup, and that's pretty much all that is. This. If I remember, I could never get it to run. It would it refused to run no matter what I did with it. Double click it and try to re uninstall, reinstall, clean, uninstall, reinstall, and things like that. None of that ever worked. This game is bad simply because it doesn't have debug mode. You can still get level select, but you can't get debug mode, and that's what ruins this one. Uh, what exactly is debug mode? Debug mode is a uh, special mode that developers would otherwise use. However, in the case of Sonic, for example, you can change Sonic into a, like a like a one of those springs or a ring or one of the enemies, things like that, and uh, you can actually place them around the level and create your own mini levels in a sense. It's so much fun doing that. Is it? If, you're, if you're found fantasy collection over there. I'll get over there eventually. And I want to separate junk from because I got backup discs and stuff over here too. These I can just probably sell because I'm otherwise never gonna bother with them. That's an empty case. Uh, yeah, these are sell. Hmm, I don't know where this came from. Uh, let's see. Want to cover this one? Sure. Jumping Flash 2. This game is, well, this is what got me into starting Platform Masters when I began playing it. Uh, how did that happen? Easy. Look up and you'll see clouds drifting by. When you jump a lot, you can actually see them getting progressively closer and from their basic perspective effects. I basically learned how that worked after I get j I can jump, I can otherwise max the height in any of these jumping flash games, including the first. There is a trick to doing it, but it requires that you enable super mode or something, hyper mode, I don't remember exactly which, but yeah, it makes puts a lot of fun into the game getting 29 so high up that you can fall for 30, 13 seconds before touching ground again. Watching the ground slowly grow as you get closer to it. That's my favorite thing about this game. Sonic 3 was connected to Sonic and Knuckles. This game is a masterpiece of all the Sonic games. This game has logged so much more time than all the others. All the other Sonic games. And because everything is otherwise perfected about it, the debug mode system, the uh, the levels are really big, so there's a lot of places they can do. Figure out that two-tailed fox named Tails that I just love abusing so much. 
toss them in the water, create debug, created courses of bumpers and Carnival Night 2, just ding 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 you know, like that, and wait for them to drown, get a new fox and go from there. This game is, well, kind of a kid's kind of game, but I remember renting it, and from there, uh, well, I just happened to have, uh, what was that? Oh yeah, there was this one mini game in here, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but you basically have a school, the school bus itself is on the bottom, and you got this ball that's kind of like a pinball kind of game in a way. Uh, it's based off of some Atari game I don't remember the name of. Uh, but there's uh, some bricks and stuff up above, and there's special blocks that if you hit the special blocks, various things happen, like a comet falling down for 500 points, and sometimes a whole bunch of extra balls come out in the form of the various planets. That mini game is so fun, I've actually literally gotten to level 70 on it through pausing. Super Mario Brothers. This is the original. Except this one's already covered, so might as well. Do I have three of these things? My, my. How did I get so many? Super Mario 2. Now, this is a dull game. It's nowhere near as fun as any of the other Mario games are. But still, it does give you the idea. I might even sell this one because I don't like it much. Destination Earth Star. This one I remember quite well. Uh, it's just. It's just not really my kind of game either. So, might as well add this to the cell bin. This game is hard like crazy. I've only ever beat it once in my entire history of playing this. And I've got, I don't know, 200 hours, 300 hours at it. And I've only once ever beaten it. I've gotten to the sixth level one, maybe once or twice. But it's just so hard, it's amazing. Good luck beating it, I'll tell you. And probably another duplicate. Do I actually have it?